All right, we're back here on uh, the Stormworks Basics uh, career playthrough. So we're starting to get our boat ready where hopefully we can get it back in career soon. Um, we still need to hook the engines up. Uh, you know, this is kind of my method here. You know, it, it might seem like it's kind of a little convoluted, it takes a little bit of time, but, you know, we, we made simple seats to get this up and running, but we want to make sure the, that the hull of the boat itself worked. You know, if we went through all this time and energy designing the boat and it didn't work, you know, this would all be for naught. So we really want to make sure that this boat functions first and then go back and, you know, connect everything up. We could spend days designing a boat and realize that the hull is too narrow or the, um, you know, it weighs too much, you know. So these sorts of things can really, you know, kind of destroy your, your creation right off the bat if you don't test them out first. So that's just kind of, you know, from experience, that's the best way to do it, make sure it works. So what I'm actually going to do here is, that reminds me, I want to kind of take this and I want to take it out on the ocean again and make sure that everything still works. So before we um, disconnect all these seats and everything, the seat here that actually controls the boat, I want to make sure the boat functions. Now, some things we did change some dynamics of the boat. For example, we added a lot of weight. Remember, we added all of this um, upper cabin, we added seats, we added you know, dashes, all that stuff. So we've added quite a bit of weight to this boat. That has made our center of gravity go up. All right, so we want a nice low center of gravity. So one thing we want to do is we want to take the boat out and make sure it still functions well. So let's uh, spawn it in and let's go take it for a drive. Now we're going to use this front seat here. Okay, and let's just drive it around, make sure it still functions well. We did a bunch of work to make sure it's functioning. We want to make sure it still works for us. So we're now, so we need to think of some things that probably happened here, right? The boat's probably going to be slower, right? Because we added weight, so we uh, we might want to make our engine a little bit bigger. So that's something to consider. Um, it's also going to be a little bit more top heavy, so we want to do some things like do turning tests. Again, we don't have any uh, sideways stability, but as you can see, it's still nice and stable. So we're gonna do tests like that to make sure that it's um, still stable. We can do some things like um, add some wind and make sure all our wind systems are still working with the added weight, make sure we don't tip over. So that's 50% wind. All right, so that seems to be working all right. You know, I don't have any fears of stability issues. The anti-fly is still working well. Stability is still good, so it looks like it's working pretty well so far. All right, so let's do one thing while we're in here. Let's keep it running straight, and let me jump in my um, control seat, make sure I have good visibility. I do. I like the visibility. I could be sitting a little higher, but I'm not. Um, you know, I'm not bothered by where I'm sitting now. This is pretty good. Um, I think I have pretty good visibility where I'm at. You know, so I yep, I have really good visibility. Um, no issues there. You know, I could stand here. I get. Yep, so this is working well. Uh, we're not having any tipping problems, so this is working really well. So um, that's important to check because the last thing you want to do is get too far ahead. Um, I did this with my first boat, you know, in my uh, when I was in career, was the boat didn't have good it, the center of gravity was too high and the boat would roll over. So it took a ton of effort to make to fix that to make it work. And I put a ton of detailing in, so um, it's good to go back in and make sure it actually functions the way you want it to, which this does. So we're in good shape here. All right, so let's start working on this. Um, let's do let's let's try to convert. We know it runs. Let's see. Let's just do um, let's do a couple minutes of detail work, and then we'll go in and we'll actually make some more functions work. So I tend to um, you know if. I tend to try to work where I want to, where if, um, you know, if I'm kind of getting bored doing a bunch of putting microcontrollers on, I might uh, switch out and do some detailing. It, it gives you a nice little break to switch and do something different like detailing if you're, uh, if you're a little burned out doing uh, microcontrollers or something. So I'm going to do a little bit of detailing here. I'm going to put some uh, rails on the side here. And so what I did there, I, I measured, I didn't say what I was doing. I measured this, it's an even number. I like to tend to keep these odd numbers. It makes the division a little bit easier. So like that is a odd number, so that's good. So um, you'll see what I'm gonna do here in a second. I'm just putting some uh, 
some simulated grab rails on here. And we'll put, oh, I don't need a pipe there. Let's go like this. And I made sure my symmetry was on. I started building without it. Okay, so this is good. So now I'm going to look that is, so I use these blocks to measure. Often what I'll do is I'll make them pink just so that I know to delete them if I left them there. So that's nine. So five is going to be our center. So we're going to delete that. And then that, I'm going to put a um, T piece here. Okay, that looks good. Let's delete out my pink measuring blocks. Come here. That's going to be um, 27. So what do we need there? So we need 14. So 14 is the center point right there. So let's delete that block. Okay, let's see. Um, let's put that in. That T piece there. Okay, let's measure here. So we are at 13. So we want 7. So there was 7 right there. Let's delete 7. And let's put a T piece in. All right, and then we, this should be the same on this side. There's 13, so there's 7. And let's put the T piece in. So that gives us nice um, even distribution there. All right, so that looks good. That's our, uh, just our grab rail. So a nice little bit of detailing, some extra, um, you know, make it pop a little bit. All right, so let's start going in and let's start working on trying to get this um, plumbed up a little bit. Let's see, I might do one more detail-y thing here. Uh, let's delete those. Let's put in inverse pyramid like that. Let's see if I like this. Oh, I can't. Okay, never mind. I have my door is there, so I'm going to leave these square on the back, which is fine. Um, that's that's good. All right, so let's start doing some actual connection here. Um, so we we did did a panel here. So let's uh, so what we're going to do is daisy chain. So let's go to composite. And so if we remember, we did our numbering here where this starts at one, and this one go here goes down to twelve, and then this will be its own thing. Um, let's see, remember what I put there. That's a throttle. We'll do those as their own thing. Um, because these take up a lot of numbers. These are seven segments, so that's seven, fourteen, so that's four, that's twenty-eight. So that's going to be twenty-eight um, inputs right there. So we want to save that, and make it, it it its own microcontroller. This is going to be its own microcontroller. Um, this may or may not be its own microcontroller. This um, will probably be part of this microcontroller. Um, so we'll figure that out. So let's um, let's start by daisy chaining here. So what I mean by daisy chaining is so we're going to take this last one here, and we're going to connect it here. We're going to connect that one there. Now this information is going to go, it's going to be able to read all these, because this one's sending its information to this one, this one's sending both informations to this, then this one's sending all three informations out. So let's. So that's what we need. So let's look at our, our engine microcontroller. We're actually going to double these. Um, so let's move that up. So let's cut it. Let's actually put it up top. Um, I'm going to put it on, on the roof just because this way I can expand it. It's not going to hit anything. All right, now, I've of course, I've made this more complicated. So um, let me actually do something really quick here as well. So I'm going to put that there. Let's go back out on the ocean. I want to do a max speed test. Um, remember I said we added a ton of weight here. So that's going to um, – oh, I'm in the wrong seat. I need to control from the other seat. So that's going to change our speed. We still want about 30 knots. So because we added a bunch of weight putting the cabin in, um, we want to see what our new max speed is. Might be too slow for us. So it's about 20. So let me um, change the, um, what's, our, what's our weight? Our weight is 3628. Let's change. Let's go. Let's go all the way to 101. Let's see what our maximum speed can be with these engines at this weight. Now we do have a lot of weight blocks, uh, but we're sitting per pretty in the water. We don't want to really mess with that yet. All right. So our engines are going to be less efficient with this. Okay. So see, we're hitting the red line. Okay, we're hitting the red line. So that means we need more gearing. Okay, so let's go to 3, 2. All right. So at 1 to 1, we were hitting our red line of 15 uh, RPS. So by adding some gearing, that's going to put more load on. We'll not only get more speed, but we'll get um, we'll keep it off the red line. 
we'll get more efficiency. All right, so that's 12 RPS, which we could still lose some RPS, and 23 knots, so we're not far off our desired speed. So let's go, um, let's go to 9.5. Let's see what 9.5 was again. And I'm, so I'm probably gonna end up making these 10 cylinder engines. So it's always better to go bigger on engines that allows you to control your cooling better and, um, and to gear them. And then that will actually give you a lot more efficiency. So we're doing about 20 knots here at nine. So let's go ahead and do this really quick. Let's increase the size of our engines again. Um, and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start, um, we'll do selection grid. I'm gonna start here at the alternator and I'll use the uh, resize grid. I think I need to go three across and I'm actually gonna go, do I wanna go down? I think I do. Um, can I go two blocks forwards? I don't know, let's look. Let's look really quick. Okay, so I can only do add one cylinder with these um, tanks in the way. So let's move our fuel tanks. Let's actually, I might go to one tank. Let me look and see what these tank values are. Let's go logic, data, tank contents. Let's just pick a, um, a display and let's uh, dial rather and let's put it in. Okay, let's see what this value is. So that's 692 liters. Let's look at my calculator. Um, I, I don't need to put in a gallon. So anyways, um, I don't know what these are using for liters per um, second, but I can't imagine that's using that much. So that should be more than enough fuel. I don't think we need two tanks. So let's see if I can delete my tank, delete a tank out. That might be better. Um, That'll give me up a gauge too. So what's the width? Three, that's three, yep. Yeah. So let's actually, we're gonna delete a tank out of this here. We don't need two tanks. So let's um, take off symmetry, delete a tank. We don't really need two. Um, it's also gonna cause us some issues. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the whole tank. I'll just add it back in. All right, so let's actually increase the size of our engines again. Um, you know, we could make these flats if, if there were too much space, but um, you know, I, I like them the way they are. I like having them um, in line engines. So let's resize our grid. Let's grab, we're going to grab all the important bits off the engine here on the front. That's one reason why I put them all in the front like this. Let's actually go down as well and we'll grab the, um, we'll go down two and we'll grab those ports for the cooling. We might need to add more cooling at some point, but that's a later down the road step. All right, so let's move these forward to one two and that's going to allow us to um, that's going to allow us to add two more cylinders to our engine to make these um, uh, straight tens okay all right so good so now we're going to do the selection tool again and we'll grab uh, two cylinders on either side we will copy that paste it and as you can see we easily just add more cylinders to our engine we'll paste those in and now we have a bigger engine so we need to move the air here so um, oh, symmetry back on put some elbows and then we'll join the um, we'll join that up like that and then we want to add our um, let's move these constant numbers here just move these up front a little bit more so as you see how much I use the um, selection tool it's a very important tool to get used to a lot of I think new people don't use it enough for it at all really so it's good to uh, get used to that let's do tank let's do a one large tank and let's put it see this is going to allow us to keep it in the center of the gravity center of gravity as well so right here is center is the CG so that's perfect um, that's going to allow us to keep that right at the CG let's go um, we'll do a T pipe actually I want to shut off symmetry T pipe Okay, and let's go to the fuel here. So let me start on the starboard side here. I want to go, up. and it's going to be a pain here to get rab. Okay, let's go up one right now to start. Let's do, we'll do put symmetry back on for right the second. And let's see. Um, actually, I'm going to delete this here. Let's go like this. And then I'm going to go all the way across. And then I'm going to take off symmetry. I'll delete this here and put a T-pipe. 
Actually, I'm not going to do that. Let's do this. All right, so the new, with these new tanks, um, the new tanks, they have a port on either side. So fluid tank large. Let's go right at the center of gravity again. And let's put it on its side like this. I want it right at the CG. This, So the reason why I'm putting the fuel at the center of gravity is this fuel is, we're going to lose fuel as we burn it. So it's going to keep the center of gravity in the same spot. So let's say we put the fuel tank all the way in the bow. The We're going to set this and balance the vehicle up so that we have that uh, weight in the bow. Well, as we burn fuel, we lose the weight in the bow, and now the bow gets hev it gets light. So if it's in the center, the boat's going to go straight up. It's not going to tip forward or back. So that's why I like doing that. All right, so now we can keep symmetry on, and uh, let's connect up our fuel. Okay. All right, so now here we go, and we have um, our fuel is reconnected. All right, so now um, that should be good. All right, so let's save this really quick. Um, what are we on? We're on playthrough. This should be video eight, I believe. Eight. So let's save that. All right, good. So we're reconnected. Um, so we made the engines bigger. So let's go do a test run again, and let's see how we're looking on speed. All right, so I know a lot of people make it a lot like speed is everything. It isn't, but um, I would like 30 knots out of this. That would be nice. So we're at 11 RPS, close to 30 knots here. Um, let's see. I think if we go down a gear, we're going to... Uh, well, we, we'll lose a little RPS and we'll probably lose speed, but let's test it. It'd actually be going up a gear, I think, but let me look. We go uh, two ones. Let's see what two one looks like, and if not, we'll try three twos. Okay, up oh, in the wrong place to drive. Okay. <laughs> So we'll eventually I'll work on that so it's not revving like that. So right there we lost about three knots and we uh, took off about two RPS. Let's go up to three twos. Up to three twos. All right, so this is gonna be an inexpensive boat to run anyways. Um, so I'm not too concerned about having super efficiencies. We're not running this for, you know, it's not like it's a container ship where we're going to the Arctic. We're doing close missions. Okay, so this is hitting the rev limiter. So, and it's actually slower because of that. So let's go, um, 9.5 is the gearing for us. So 9.5 is our gear. So we'll do 27 knots. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Um, we're at 34. So let's keep these at 9.5. Um, that worked out well for us, I think. Okay, so we got that going for us. That's working. All right, so now let's let's try to hook this panel up. So we daisy chain that. I moved our engine controller up top. I'm actually going to make two of these. Um, I want to independently control the port motor and the starboard motor. So that's going to add a little complexity, but it's also going to allow us to do some maneuvering. Um, let's see. We have battery, stern alt, battery. Do I need battery there? Alt. Yeah, I do need battery. Okay, stern alt. Okay, why do I have these stern alt battery? Okay, so stern alt I can um, I can use. So stern alt is going to be... I need to make this bigger anyway, so let's just make it bigger. Let's not try to play around. So logic stern alt. Okay, alt. Let me see. This is alt. Let me see what those are. Stern alt, stern alt, and alt. Engine, clutch, coolant pump, RPS, starter, fuel, air, seat, and engine. Okay. So let's just add two for right now. We're going to use them, and that will be panel. So it'll be a composite input from the panel. So this takes our signals from the panel. Composite output panel, that's going to send signals back to the panel for like gauges and whatnot. Then I want to see what's up with these um, 
these alts. Okay, stern alt. Okay, that's the anti fly, so I do need that. So that's anti fly. All right. And then where is alt go? Alt is our alternator. So let me let me rename that so I don't confuse it. Alternator. Okay. So we need those anyways. There's our panel. I'm just going to connect those for right now. Um All right. So let's um Let's get this all configured, then we're going to copy it for the other engine. All right. So let's look at our numbers here. Um, all right. So for right now, the seat is start stop for the engines. All right. So I want for the, so this is going to be our port motor to start. So for that, I want three. So this should be three. That's going to be that button on our dash, and that's going to be um, that's going to be um, right there. I want master power, control C. Master power is going to be one. And I want master power to control the PID here. Let's see what else does this control? And that controls the alternator PID there. I want that to also control the alternator PID there. I just want this to be, I just want three to be responsible for the starter. That's it. This is going to be actual master power. Um, actually, I think master power is not. We'll do systems. So that'll be two. Two will be systems. Um, master power, I'll just have connect the electricity uh, on a relay. All right, so that's done. All right, so what else do we need? My seat controls. Um, the one key on my seat increases the throttle. The two key on my seat increases, uh, decreases the throttle. The three is the idle. That does what my zero will do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some ores in so that we can either use the seat or we can use the uh, panel. That way, you know, a lot of people like that where you can also use the seat. All right, so we're going to put, uh, we need three ores here. Control C, V, and V, and now we have three ores. So let's go, uh, we need to... can't do an or with a composite I can't no okay so let's um, let's take this here and we'll plug these into the ores um, here so we'll take our first or and we'll go one into or and then into up we'll do our second or we'll do two into um, or and then into down we'll do our three or into the top of the or and then into the um, into there and then we'll also take this and go into the clutch so where the where those were and then we can uh, pretty these up a little bit all right nice now we'll take the panel and that's going to be I'm trying to remember the numbers so let's not remember the numbers let's just go look at them all right so this is going to be um, I kind of want this to be part of this system I do want this to be part of the system. So right here we end at um, 12. So we're going to make this 13. So we'll add this to the panel. We'll make this 14. We'll make this 15. We have 32 numbers total, by the way. 15. And we'll make this 16. Okay, this will be 17 here. And this will be... Um, 18 here. Okay. And actually, I'm trying to think, do I copy that whole panel? Uh, nope, I'm just going to increase the size of the panel. Okay, I'm talking to myself. I was going to make two panels, one for either engine, but that's going to cause me problems. So I'm going to make one that control, one big panel that will do both engines. We'll just copy a bunch of uh, information, composites. Okay, so now you see how I daisy chained it. So I'm just going to continue my daisy chain. So that goes there, this goes there. Um, we can actually connect that. So this node here for the panel will go up to panel. This panel here will come back down to there. And if we daisy chain anymore, we'll have to move it, which we actually probably are going to daisy chain this. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, so what do, what do we stop at? We stopped at. Uh, these are none, so they don't count. So that's 18. So that's going to be uh, 19, 19, 
20. This will be 21. This will be 22. 22. Okay, good. So we're going to daisy chain those out too. So that will go here, and then this one will actually go to the panel. So what we have here is we have the, the numbers from the panel are coming in, and they're flowing through like this, and then they're going back up to the panel. So that's daisy chaining. All right, so let's look at um, our throttle numbers. That's what we started with here. That's um, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So 13 through 18 are going to be our essentially our thrust controls. Okay. Okay, good. So let's see. So this is going to be our port side for now. So let's um, let's look at. Um, so we'll do our port numbers. Okay. So starting at 13. Uh, so 13. So we want to read a, an on off. So 13. Is going to be our increase our port throttle. 15 is going to be decrease our port throttle. And 15 is a decrease our uh, throttle. All right, and then what did we do? Was it um, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is zero. Okay, 17 is going to be zero. Okay. So we have 13, 15, and 17. Those are all going to be red. Uh, going to be red here. I'm going to go. Uh, we'll put those. Stack them like this. Kind of keep them clean. So um, that's going to be increase the port throttle. So again, we can control it by the seat, or we can control it by there. This is going to be um, decrease the port throttle. This here is going to be um, idle or zero button. And so now they can be controlled by either the panel or by the seat. Um, so let's test it. And then I think we'll call that a video and we will work on the next one. Okay, good. So that's in. Let's uh, let's actually control from the seat. Okay. Systems. That starts. That will start both our engines because I haven't segregated the engines yet. Should be able to control it with the seat. Okay, I'm not getting seat control. Let's try the throttle. The throttle works. Alright, so now we're on the panel. Uh, I didn't connect my rudder, but um, but as you can see, that's controlling it. Let me see why. Let's go zero. Idle engines. Idle engines works. Okay. Um, my seat control is not. You know what it is? I know why. Okay. I haven't connected. This old seat's still connected. So let's go seat. And that's going to take over this old seat. Um, let's see. Let me make sure to see how the rudders are connected. Rudders are still connected to our old seat directly. So let's go. Uh, where is AD? Where is I'm going to find it eventually. AD. There we go. And now, let's see, um, spawn it. We should be able to control all our features from that seat. Let's try it up. So, master power systems, port start stop. Again, that's going to do both of them for right now. Um, and then we will go, um, we'll use the one key on the, on the seat. All right, now we're driving. Okay, good. So that's, uh, that is that. Um, if I do two, so two doesn't appear to be working. Let me. I can't decrease my thrust. That's interesting. I might. Okay, so I can't decrease my thrust with my seat. I, okay. Now one's letting me decrease. Huh. That's weird. So I've got it going in reverse now. Okay, that's going. Very interesting. I don't know what's up with this. Okay, so we will look at this. Okay, so we have some uh, things to look at, but as you can see, we started getting ready for that seat. So uh, we'll call it here in this video. 
and uh, we will start to work on this again on the next video. So that's saved up, and I'll add that in for uh, video 8. So the next video will be 9. Um, in the next video, what we're going to do is I'm going to continue. I want to get this system completely working uh, to control the boat. Um, we'll get rid of the seat. Um, so what I was starting to talk about is I thought I was going to make two of these microcontrollers, but I'm just going to make um, it bigger. Is Currently, we have one... Um, we're essentially controlling both engines with one setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split them so that we can control our engines independently. Um, adds a little more complexity, but you know you'll be able to sync them, and it won't uh, it won't cause any problems. Um, all right, so I will see you in video nine. Thank you.